everybody welcome back jujitsu 2000 here today I'm coming at you with an interesting video for you today I want to talk about making a fire with one match using no tools nothing like that now this is a challenge that was put out by my fellow YouTube brother black owl outdoors crick put out this challenge I thought it was a cool concept I thought the video was cool and he had a friendly challenge for his fellow youtubers to get involved and try out this uh, process now they did one thing that I'm not going to be able to do today and they did this fire in snowy type conditions now I live in Arizona so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to meet those inclement conditions for the video today however I am going to take all of my skills and I'm going to try to produce a fire using a single match I hope you enjoy the video stay with me So the first thing I want to look for when it comes to a fire is I want to get some of this grass. Now when it comes to making fire, preparation is everything. Getting everything laid out long before you throw that spark, in my opinion, is crucial. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to gather, sorry about that, I'm going to gather a bunch of this grass. The more the merrier, the stuff is very dry. It's gonna be excellent tinder for my fire. My apology for any wind noise that you guys might be getting. It's a very windy condition today for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in between these trees right here and I'm gonna set some of my materials down. I'm gonna put them right here so that I can gather them and I'll come back and once I have them all together, this is where I'm going to build my fire. There's not a lot of wind in this area. I'm between, I'm inside like a triangle of trees. So I'm going to set my grass down here. My next step is to go get some small kindling. On this tree, this is a juniper tree. You can see there's some of these small things right here. I'm going to snap these off. And this, you notice, I'm, I'm getting this nice clean snap off of them. This is the type of material that you would want. Small stuff, smaller than a pencil. This is what you're really going to need in a inclement condition. Stuff that's small and, and not anything off of the ground. You want things that are hanging in the tree. Those are drier than anything that you'll find on the ground. So I'm going to gather a bunch of this stuff up and I'll be back. In a little bit I'm going to go get some more. It doesn't necessarily matter what species of tree you're getting these from as long as you're getting up out of, as long as you're getting them up out of the tree and not from the ground. Especially, like I mentioned earlier, in inclement conditions, you don't want to be picking stuff up that's off the ground. Make sure that when you're picking them out, that you get that good snap, that good, clean, dry snapping sound. That'll tell you that this is good stuff for our fire. So there's a little bit more on my second pile. Now I'm going to go grab some fuel. Now when it comes to fuel, if you're looking at my finger here, well, there it is. If you're looking at my finger here, you want things about as big around as your finger or larger. This is going to be our fuel. That's what I'm going to go find now. If you look right here, you can see there's a nice branch. You see that clean snap? This thing is dead. And this is the kind of material that you want for your fuel. I'm going to gather some of this. This is all good stuff. Again, I'm trying to gather as much stuff off of the tree from underneath the tree and trying to stay avoiding grabbing things that are on the ground. Things that are on the ground aren't going to work for me. So things like this that are in my hand, these are what I'm looking for. This is my fuel. This is the smaller fuel. I'm also going to get larger fuel after this. But this is what I have right now. See? 
there's my finger pretty close to the same diameter or larger so I'll be back in a minute there's some fuel I'll be back with more fuel now we're gonna start with the little bit larger you see how this is bigger than my my finger that's gonna be my last size of fuel so if you start here from the left you can see that I have small grass small kindling small fuel into larger fuel okay folks right here is some juniper bark and I'm gonna rip some of this off because this is gonna be a little bit of added tinder that'll carry my flame a little longer than that grass will that grass is gonna run out very quickly but this is gonna be a little more sustainable it's gonna last a little bit longer so I'm just pulling this off with my hands just kind of ripping it up if I had a knife I'd be gouging this tree and I wouldn't take a lot out of a single tree because I don't want to disrupt this tree so I would be taking a little bit from each tree but this is my juniper bark this is an excellent tinder it's an excellent fire starter material works really good I'm just kind of going through pulling some of this stuff off ripping these things off they kind of they kind of shred right off see it's really dry underneath see how dry that is and once I get a bundle of this I kind of break it down and I crunch it up and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make a nice little bird's nest out of this stuff takes a little time working it but it makes a nice bird's nest I'll have that ready here in just a minute just takes a little bit of work I just keep breaking them up keep getting it going and this is basically a lighter version to put on top of the grass it'll catch this which is a little bit larger than the grass but it's still smaller than the kindling this is going to help my fire okay I have my my bark here I'm just going to work on it I'm going to process it right down here on the ground this is going to be the location which my fire is going to be now if I had snow on the ground it would be important that I put some sort of fire lay down but I don't need to do that today because I'm lucky <laughs> and I don't have to deal with those conditions I would love to but if I did have snow which you can see other videos on my channel where I'm dealing with fire and inclement conditions go check those out but you can see that I'm just kind of roughing this stuff up I'm not roughing it super fluffy uh, because I don't need it that fluffy today I just need it to be medium so again I'm just breaking up these little fibers and opening them up see that that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do this is gonna help my fire is not gonna go on top of this this is actually gonna go on top of my fire if I wanted to do some sort of fire lay, like I mentioned earlier, if there was inclement conditions or snow, I'd lay a series of pieces of wood down like this, and I would put my fire right on top of this. But we're not gonna do that today. We have good conditions. So we're just about ready to get started. You can see again that I've got my secondary tinder bundle pile. I've got my grass over there right here I've got my small kindling I've got my small fuel and then I have my large fuel I apologize if there's any wind noise folks okay folks here's my matches I'm gonna get one match set it right on top of the box and in the meantime I'm gonna put together my fire alert. So let's get this grass. I'm going to take this grass. I'm just going to kind of work it into a bird's nest type shape. This is going to be the part that's going to catch the very first bit of my flame from my 
my match. Now, what's going to happen is I want to make a small cove in here that I want to insert my match inside. It's going to have a little bit of a wind block around it. That's going to catch. Then I'm going to grab some of this stuff and put it on. Then I'm going to go with my small pile, my small fuel, and then my large fuel. So I think I'm about ready. Okay, folks. Here goes our fire. One match. I'm going to wait for this wind to die down a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to get this stuff close. You can see that I have everything very close and ready. Because I'm waiting for my wind to die down. I only have one match. So I want to wait. I'm just waiting for that wind to die. And once that wind dies, it's all or nothing. I have one match. It's kind of windy. Once I go, it's 100% forward. Okay, folks, here we go. Let's try it. One match. We've got that. You don't want to pile things on too quickly. When I put this pile on, I'm putting it on nice and loose. I don't want to smother the fire. I'm opening it up. I'm trying to get this smaller stuff lit. Put this little bit of bark on top. Things are looking good. It's kind of windy today, so it's a little bit of a challenge. Nothing we can't handle. The main thing when it comes to this kind of fire is you got to be patient. Let the stuff catch. You want the small stuff to catch first, and then you put a little bit, you get that stuff going, and then you put a little bit larger stuff on, and you get, get that going. Then you put a little bit larger, you slowly graduate up to the next size. That's why it's so important to have everything laid out ahead of time before you make that first spark or that first ignition. So now you can see that we're starting to get a good flame. Now I'm going to start adding some of this. And again, I want to make it loose. I don't want like a real tight, uh, when I throw those on, I don't want them real tight. You can see all that gray smoke. That gray smoke is an indicator that I'm smothering my fire. I want to wait for that gray smoke to go away before I throw a bunch of more stuff on there. Back this camera up a little bit. Now we can see that the gray smoke has kind of went away a little bit. And we want to give this thing a little bit of time to catch before we go throwing a bunch more fuel on. But once you start getting flames on the top of the fire instead of gray smoke, then you can start to throw your bigger fuels on. And I'm doing them kind of in a teepee type fashion. See that? Just like that. Kind of like a teepee. And that, my friends, is my fire. That's my one match fire. And again, I want to give a shout out to my fellow YouTube brother, Black Owl Outdoors Crick. Thanks for the challenge. My apology for not being able to do it in the snow. I would have loved to have done it that way. Thanks for watching everybody. Please feel free to like this video, share this video, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you like the content that you see. Go check out my Facebook page and as always have a beautiful day. We'll see you next time everybody. Bye bye. Now folks, there's one more quick thing I want to mention before I go, and that is my friend Black Owl Outdoors, who started this challenge. I'm going to let you know that I will put a link in the description box down below to his channel. So feel free to go check him out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. 
here's my challenge to everybody that watched this video. When you get finished making your fire, my challenge to you is to make sure that your fire is 100% out before you leave. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm putting dirt right on top of the fire. You can still see that there's smoke. I'm not going to stop with the dirt until it's cool to the touch of my hands and there's no more smoke. it's too hot to the touch with your hands you're not done yet like right there I just felt one it was nice and warm so that one's not done yet we have some more dirt I live in Arizona and our state gets very hot in summertime and we have a huge risk of fire danger in our state so it's very important to make sure your fire is 100% out If you have any sticks or anything like this and you don't want to bury them, dig you a hole in the dirt and put them in the hole where the dirt is. For me, I'm just going to leave them right on top. I'm going to bury them. A lot of work, but it's worth it. I'm feeling all around with my hands for any signs of any moi uh, any warmth or heat. And if I feel anything, that's where I'm gonna put more dirt. This thing is absolutely cool to the touch. No issues at all. You can also see that there's no smoke. It's completely out. There's a closer look at it. Cool thing about doing this is when you come back next time, you can dig this up and you have some charred wood in there and that will actually help your fire start. Now looking off over there, right there, I'm seeing a tiny bit of smoke. That's all it needs to take off. So I'm going to make sure I take care of that. Right there where my finger is. Still a little dirt. Make sure it's cool to the touch. No problems. Everything's good.
now we can go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.